Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, how long has this been muted for? <gasps> oh no, I wonder how many videos have been completely mute. Oh man, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, I'm totally stuck now. I'm trying to get my my little guys to, my levels to transition. And it's super frustrating because if I just start in a level, they work happily, right? Doing cool stuff, walking around. Everything is good. Oh, he should die here. <clears throat> but if I start from my main menu, and I fly in, now he dies. It's killing me. I got no idea. <laughs> Well, no, I have, an, I have more of an idea now. It's an order of operations thing. So, oh, cool. Uh, what are you, are you using Unity or just any other language? What are you starting to learn with? I'm curious about on trigger enter. And spawn setup cubes. Whoa. Let's look at this call stack course, no full call stack. I started learning with uh, C++ about eight years ago, and I teach video game programming at Academy of Art. <clears throat> I do believe that WoW uses Lua as their scripting language. Um, Lua is pretty cool. I teach that. It's a fun language, not too crazy. I mean, you can do interesting stuff with it, but it's um, it's a scripting language, so it's less scary than some of the lower level languages, I believe. <clears throat> some people might disagree. I got to figure out where... Where does call trigger or on trigger enter get called? No. Update order rendering coroutines. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Awake, reset, start. Wow, this is all completely... Um, <clears throat> this image is awful. <laughs> if you're trying to learn languages, um, I would say you should focus on... Pick something that you want to do with that with programming or scripting. A visual-based novel. Hmm, interesting. Um, I use Unity for most of my prototype stuff. It's really, really, um, 
it's pretty easy to pick up and learn. I mean, it's like learning any piece of advanced software. It's going to take some time. But once you've learned how to use Unity, then you can do a lot of stuff pretty quickly. I use it mostly to test out my ideas and see if they're worth pursuing. And in fact, this prototype has gone far enough that I think I might actually scrap it soon. I don't know if I want to scrap it all the way, but just restart using the lessons that I've learned. <clears throat> I can show you my different special cubes I have if this is uh, if I haven't broken that yet. Yep, that's broken. Oh, I think that's because my... Nice, thanks. Um, I currently don't really have set stream times. I usually like to do it sometime in the afternoon, so between noon and 3. Uh, and I try and do it every single day. I did miss it yesterday, but <clears throat> it's, um, yeah, it's just kind of tricky. I try and just roll with the punches and figure out when I can and when I cannot stream. Uh, school will start up in a month, and once uh, once my classes have started going again, I'll be able to have a more consistent streaming schedule, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the follow. Um, if you want to, you can go to, uh, I have a channel on YouTube and it's, uh, I think it's Prof Zesty. So if you want to go back and start watching from the beginning, um, I actually start my, I start this project from scratch and I've recorded every single minute that I've worked on it. I haven't done anything off stream. So <clears throat> you can come hang out and uh, ask questions and we can chat. Or if you're interested in watching from the beginning to see how I got to this point, um, you can do that as well through my YouTube channel. Appreciate it. I think now I'm in the double digit subs. Oh, buddy. Internet fame, here I come. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I would recommend uh, Unity is really easy to pick up, especially you said you're doing like a storybook visual novel type. Um, Unity's 2D stuff is very easy to do. I'm trying to do some crazy 3D maths, and uh, that's really fun, and it's interesting, but not necessary for all types of games. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to have to go to the drawing board here. Because I believe that um, <clears throat> oh. so I think that Unity's on trigger enter is not going to work for me anymore. I think I need to devise my own system. <clears throat> So let's see, my layout of the world. I've got a whole bunch of cubes in the world. And each cube 
has six faces. And each face has path nodes. And that's an unknown number depending on the type of path I have. So if I was going to do my own collision detection system, so I've got these two cubes next to each other. And these are the path nodes on this one. And these may be like this. This might not be too awful. Um, so I have a cube and I want to validate the paths. I usually I use this tool to sort of um, sort of like my infinite whiteboard. Um, you can see I have written a bit about this project here. It's also really nice to sort of see like like oh this is these are the first sort of things that I drew that I was talking about, and you can sort of follow the path of logic and just sort of talking to myself. Excellent tool. This program is called Mischief, and it's free. So when I decide to validate paths, I need to um, break all of the paths. on cube and neighbors. And actually here I need to find neighbors. Um, this should only work on active faces <clears throat> yeah this program is only really useful if you have a, a little drawing tablet like this I tried doing it with the mouse <sighs> terrible it's so hard to draw with a mouse <laughs> no way. That would be wild if I could do this with the mouse. Oof. Mm, okay, I see. <clears throat> that makes sense. I know that Twitch has a little bit of a delay. Maybe built in to stop stream sniping. Maybe it's just a technical thing. Probably both. A little bit of both. <sighs> so yeah, it turns out I'm going to need to develop an entire new system to replace Unity's on trigger enter because I have no control over when this executes. And that is causing me endless amounts of grief. Maybe the last week I've spent um, trying to solve this problem. <clears throat> and I finally tracked it down to... Oh! It's out of my hands. That's one of the downsides of Unity. It's like, oh, sure, it's a great engine, and you can do a lot of stuff quickly, but you have no control over the internal workings of the engine. So if I want to change how it works under the hood, I cannot. Not without a massive subscription to the company.
I'm trying to think if it would be worth to start a new project because this is a pretty core core thing. I do believe that they do allow you to edit the source code. Um, I don't. I don't think that you're editing the source code for everyone. Like they give you your own repository, and then you can sort of make changes. I am eighty percent sure that that's the case. <clears throat> I do know that Unity has a team of people where if you're paying them a bunch of money because you're making a bunch of money, uh, they will send Unity engine professionals to studios. And the professional will look through the code and be like, okay, you need to do it this, this, and this way in order for the engine to run at its most optimal speed. And I don't think you need to start paying Unity until you make over $200,000 in a single year. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're making some good money, that's for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. They're like, hey, I want everyone to use our engine, but if you make X amount of dollars, uh, you should pay us to keep developing this engine. So that way, everyone in the industry knows how to use the engine, which means more people make games with the engine, which means more money for them. Pretty smart. Unreal did the same thing recently as well. Not recently, I mean, with a few years ago. But I think I think I'm close to my hour time limit. Oh no, I got twelve minutes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do here. Unreal is the most professional engine, I believe. It's had the longest time for people to work on it. It's had consummate professionals building it for, I don't know, 20 years. Um, and Unity, you know, it's popular, but there aren't very many AAA titles that use Unity because of the limitations. Um, Unreal is open source, so if I wanted to go in and change the engine, all I have to do is download their code, change it on my machine, and then run my game. So that's one of the really big benefits of Unreal. And maybe I'll swap over to Unreal. I mean, this is just a prototype. I'm sort of testing stuff out. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. If I'm just testing stuff out, why am I focusing on this level transition thing? Well, no, I'm focusing on it because I I I want it to be one of the core parts of my of my game. How levels go from one level to another. Yeah, I like the menu. The menu looks pretty cool. The coding for each is, uh, it's, it's, first of all, they use different languages. Um, Unreal uses C++, which is a much more complex and powerful language. Unity uses C Sharp, which is a much nicer, it's an easier language to learn, but and at the end of the day, it's slower. Um, but both engines do sort of the same thing. 
They just have different names for it, like you said. Like in in Unity, a rotation object is called a quaternion. And in Unreal, it's called a rotator. Like you just have to learn the terminology that each engine uses. The concepts are still the same, but it's a different language. So they're they're fairly different. Yeah, I'm happy with the menu too. Eventually I'd like to have a little dude walking. You know, this is all programmer art. So let's see, which one happens first? Uh, debugging is an excellent tool. You can tell your program to stop at certain points. So whenever I put a red mark here and the code or the, the program hits this line of code, it will stop the entire game and let me inspect what's happening at this point. Um, There we go. So I want to see if this line happens first, or if my path node trigger enter happens first. Whoa. Owning core is null. Huh. So this is running before I even initialize my world. Ooh, I could cheat. I could cheat, couldn't I? So this is how everything's laid out. I've got my world, my cubes. My cube has a face container inside of it. I've got my up face. So here's my cube face and my path node container. So if we go up, up, <laughs> oh boy. That should always be the same. One, two, three, up three. So let's try and let's try and hack this together. A lot of, like you said, um, programming and figuring out stuff is just, I'm going to change this and see what happens. See how it breaks, try and predict how it breaks. And then through all of that testing and fiddling, you should be able to work your way to a solution. And once you have a solution, then you can improve it. But the hardest part is finding that first solution, I believe. Especially once you start to get a lot of, like I have lots and lots of scripts in here. Not even really that many, maybe like 40. Yeah, that's not too many scripts, but it feels like a lot. <laughs> Cube face. Get owning cube core.
And we're just going to cheat here. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> also always write comments. Always, always. I can barely remember what I did yesterday, so going into code that I wrote a month ago, whew, I have no idea what's going on in there. Comments are helpful, but they can lie sometimes, so you gotta be careful. So I'm going to cube face, and I want to find the parent of the face, the which is the up face, the parent of that, which is the face container, and the parent of that, which is the cube, right? So here's our face, up face, face container, cube. And this has our cube core, okay. Uh, it looks like an error. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Definitely. Some people uh, believe the best way to develop is to write your comments first. So it's called pseudocode. So be like, okay, I want to do X, and then I need to do Y, and then... Uh, if Z, you know, complete Q. And so people will just write all of their comments first, and then once they have the logic set up, then they can spend the time getting the syntax correct. I've been doing this for a long time, so I kind of skipped that stage. Might be a, a little bit... What's the word I'm looking for? Foolish. It might be a little bit foolish to do that. But I'm sort of a run and gun, especially when I'm working on prototypes. It's like, I'm just going to keep typing and figure out stuff until it works. But once it goes into production, I'll be a lot more serious about commenting. Um, so let's log error. Cube face cannot find owning core. Um, I, this is episode 64, so technically I've been working on this for 64 hours now. Um, I actually started probably in March, I believe, but things came up and I, I wasn't like, uh, what's the word, really diligent. I didn't do the one hour every day, but I'm trying to get back on that. I think I've done 21 days in a row now. And I'd like to keep that streak going. No, he still dies. Ah. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, there's definitely been some time wasted, but then it works fine if I spin the cube. Only when I switch the level does he die immediately. Oh, did the errors? No more errors, though, which is good. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully when I fix this, I'll be able to show you my... I've got an entire level. I've got maybe 10 or 12 different cube types. But this level transition thing has been kicking my butt. So here's our overlapped. Here's our owning face. Owning 
owning core. So this should get the owning face. Huh. Uh, let's check our overlapped. Here's our begin cube. Okay. End leaf node of cube A overlapped with end node of begin cube. That seems correct. End. Cool. They did overlap. What does this do? That spawns our faces. Okay, this is my last test, and then I believe I am out of time. Ooh, I'm a little bit over today. Nice. <sighs> okay. Um, well. No, it seems like the the two little nodes are overlapping. They understand that they're overlapping. But, like, here's my begin cube collider, and then my cube A collider is right on top of it, and they, are re they recognize each other, but for some reason my code... Uh, it's, they're, they're not connecting. And my little character, my Whitling, if he ever walks onto a node that has no next thing to walk to, he assumes that he's dead. He assumes he hit a wall or something like that. So that's why he's disappearing. <sighs> but that's it for me today. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Titan Air? Titan Air. Okay, gotcha. But uh, yeah, swing by any time. I should be streaming tomorrow. And um, peace. Have a good one.